Andrew and welcome back to Melodica in Depth. Today, we're going to learn how to circle breathe. Circle breathing is a technique that lets you play continually while you breathe. It's an invaluable skill for playing certain types of music where there aren't a lot of opportunities to pause for breath. At first, it might sound impossible, and I understand that, but I promise with some careful practice and one or two aha moments, it's within reach of everyone. Now, we're going to be building on some techniques that I discussed in my earlier video about note releases, so if you haven't seen that yet, I definitely recommend checking that out first. But first, a word of caution. Circle breathing involves a lot of unnatural breathing motions, so it needs to be approached with care. I've literally given myself colds by overdoing this, so I strongly recommend practicing at first for no more than 10 minutes a day. If at any point you feel some irritation or lightheadedness, please take a break. So to start, let's try doing some simple things we do every day. First, let's take a moment to just breathe through our nose, in and out. Observe what your body is doing as you breathe through your nose. What is your mouth doing? What is your tongue doing? Where is the breathing motion coming from? What parts of your body, mouth, and throat does the air pass through? Do this for a few minutes, really focusing on these things that normally happen subconsciously. Next, let's do the same but breathing through our mouth. Be careful not to let air pass through your nose. We want to focus on how the mouth breathes. You can hold a finger over your nose to feel whether air is coming out, but don't plug your nose since it changes the muscles involved. As you breathe through your mouth, ask yourself those same questions. What is your mouth doing? What is your tongue doing? What muscles are involved in this action? Where is the air passing through? Where is it not? How do these things differ from nose breathing? Building awareness of these things is essential for circle breathing and for playing wind instruments in general. Now that we're getting more familiar with how we breathe normally, let's take some time to observe how we breathe when we play our instrument. Play some simple music or even scales and held notes and focus as much as you can on how you're breathing. Are you breathing through your nose, mouth, or both? Do you inhale through your nose while exhaling through your mouth? What are your mouth and tongue doing? What muscles are you engaging and when? Where is air passing through? Where is it not? Circle breathing is easier when air resistance is high and harder when resistance is low. Doing it through, say, a thin straw is going to be a lot easier than doing it through a wide boba straw. This also means circle breathing on melodica is easier on the higher register and harder on the lower register or when playing multiple notes, since in that case, it takes a lot more air to play because the resistance is lower. This means that the easiest way to get started circle breathing is with full resistance, that is, with no air actually escaping. We can do this simply by blowing into the instrument while not pressing any keys. Can you feel the air pressure changing? If you push harder, can you feel the air pushing back? Where do you feel those sensations? Now for the big part. Try breathing in and out through your nose while keeping your cheeks inflated. You should be able to breathe with no air escaping from your mouth. How is this possible? What you'll notice is that when you start breathing, your tongue subconsciously goes up and to the back of your mouth making contact just in front of your soft palate. This forms an airtight boundary between your mouth and your airways. This allows you to breathe while holding pressurized air inside your mouth. This is the fundamental principle of circle breathing. It's simply a matter of inhaling through your nose while releasing pressurized air from your mouth. When you play normally, you're pressing from your diaphragm, but during a circle breath, your diaphragm is busy. So instead, you're using your mouth alone to simply release pressure out through the instrument. Now, let's try doing the same thing, but this time allowing a very small amount of air to escape while we breathe. You can do this by very lightly pressing a key, or by partially opening your spit valve, or with my preferred method of taking the tube out 
and firmly pinching it. Again, let's push and fill our cheeks. There should only be the tiniest amount of air escaping, maybe so little that you don't even notice. Now try the same thing. Breathe in and out through your nose while keeping your cheeks inflated. The motions are almost exactly the same as before. The only difference is that you'll occasionally need to push more air into your cheeks in order to keep them inflated. How do you do that? By lowering your tongue while exhaling, you reconnect your mouth and your airways, allowing you to push more air in. If you can do this, you are circle breathing. I recommend getting very comfortable with this before going further, since the motions of real performance circle breathing are essentially the same, just faster. So in the same way that you learn a fast piece of music by learning how to play it slowly, you learn how to circle breathe by first learning how to do it very slowly. Once you get comfortable circle breathing slowly and against high resistance, you'll be ready to start gradually letting more air out. If you're using the tube pinch method, you can do this by simply pinching a little bit less. The only difference with lower resistance is that your cheeks deflate faster. All of the motions are otherwise the same. Okay, let's go over how circle breathing works in real performance. If you're just now learning how to breathe with full resistance, you won't be able to do this yet, and that is okay. You can come back to this video later or watch on now for a preview of what's ahead. Real life play with circle breathing occurs in a cycle. There are four basic steps to it. One, play normally. Two, as you approach a breath, inflate your cheeks while playing. Three, in one fluid motion, use your tongue to separate your mouth from your airway and inhale quickly through your nose while releasing and gently pushing air out of your cheeks. Four, reconnect your mouth and your airway by lowering your tongue, and then continue playing normally and repeat as long as needed. Note that a circle breath will usually not fill your lungs. Since you have so little time to breathe and it has to be through your nose, you'll be lucky to get in half a tank. As a result, sustained circle breathing generally requires breathing more frequently than normal. On extended stretches of circle breathing, you might feel your lungs getting full of stale air since you're not letting out as much air as you need to be breathing in. If this happens, you can exhale through your nose while playing in order to make room for more air later. When you lower your tongue to switch from blowing with your cheeks to your diaphragm, any difference in pressure between the two will be reflected as a sudden change in volume. Matching pressures between these two and getting a seamless transition is very difficult and actually takes a lot more practice than figuring out the basic motions. Luckily, there are some easy ways to hide the pressure changes. The simplest way is to synchronize the switch over with a note change. In this way, the pressure change can often blend quite naturally with your performance. Alternatively, because circle breathing is easier in the higher register, you can try to time your circle breaths to parts of your music in the higher register. Whenever possible, I try to avoid circle breathing in the low register and on chords. And that's all for today. I hope these tips help you break the barriers into one of the most fascinating and rewarding melodica techniques that I know of. If you have any questions or feedback, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. I'm still planning a few more installments in this series, so if this has been helpful for you and you want to hear more melodica advice in the future, you can subscribe to hear more. Thanks and have a good one.